Hey everybody, um, you are tuned into the Free Matt Podcast. Uh, uh, the Free Matt Podcast is usually a libertarian roundtable discussion. I actually just had a couple interesting things to talk about today. Um, besides grimacing about my shoulder being sore, which does happen, by the way, uh, when you abuse it and it makes crackling sounds and god-awful noise, I hide that. It sucks. Um, my... Oh, Lord. We had a good a good idea for... And it's scribbled on my notes, of course, about another uh, wonderful Defending the Undefendable video. And that's what this is. If you didn't see me pass by with my notes here. Um, the person I'm looking to defend now, quite loathed by a handful of people... Uh, especially the liberals. There's a handful of conservatives that do hold him up as a darling. Uh, Donald Trump gave this man a presidential uh, medal of freedom. Um, to the chagrin of many people, I watched the man. You know, he lost his hearing. He ended up uh, with cancer, and he fought through it. Uh, I actually do. I, I spoke a little, I guess I was a critic of his, that he didn't exactly, I guess, anoint, anoint or hand the sword off to somebody else when, at the end of his, uh, his time on this earth, on his program. My person I wanted to defend, if you haven't already figured out, is, it's uh, Rush Limbaugh. You would ask me why and what I, I have to, the material I have to defend him with. His, I didn't care for his books, but his children's books were fantastic. I've had multiple people like parents, and these are not exactly conservative stalwarts, uh, talk radio people who like to crash their cars when they get mad. They were just parents, and they were like, they liked you know, the horse, and they liked the characters in the Rush Revere. They talked about all sorts of good things, uh, the history, and uh, it's pretty, pretty, I mean, like, for kids, kids liked it, and you got to give them credit. Um, as much as I didn't ever try to tackle reading his books, I haven't found them at the thrift store yet. I'm kind of big on not paying full price, but... Um... It wasn't prostate cancer. I think it was the lung cancer, maybe. But something about him. Um, people are going to get in a tizzy when I say this, but big on cigars. And big on cigars myself and uh, pipe tobacco. Um, don't get a smoke, but I dig a good cigar. And he was... I guess he was a cigar advocate several times. And there's little things about the guy I can actually say that reading that reading that article, and I think it was a special edition, right after he passed away, of course. And he mentioned, you know, obviously enjoying a, a good cigar when he goes to... He goes to a, a few restaurants or something. He could find a place to go smoke. And I know he's fond of that, but... When he wasn't smoking, you know, weird segue here. Uh, he was always big on people who went to his show wearing a suit and tie or a shirt and tie. And he always would stop to talk to these people. Uh, to, before and after a show, he didn't hide. I, I think that he used to go and uh, talk to people and had a good way of remembering folks. He was fond of folks that worked at his favorite restaurants. I think everybody got to know him. He'd go to a restaurant. He'd, he would like to, uh, what, what I remember reading, he would always, uh, there were always two or three people he could always remember. He'd remember them or he'd run into a family member and knew them. And I just find it weird that that's something that it's never brought up. Um, 
somebody says, well, he's just being human. And I'm like, well, if he treats restaurant people well, he can't be the bad guy. I thought he was. And I might have not cared for some of his uh, stuff that he likes the government to do to get, you know, to hand money to, to rich folks, like big business. But for him to have a good way with the little people in everyday Midwest, you know, odd people, even people in New York, folks that didn't even weren't even conservatives. And apparently he had a way with them and he had a way of embracing these folks. And as much as he liked to rile up uh, liberals and feminists, uh, apparently to other people's wives, he wasn't that weird of a guy. And that's a rarity. A uh, guy that's been married that many times and you would think he'd have a big ego, but he was able to keep it in check when dealing with other people's wives. And that should mean something. I know somebody says, oh, well, that's normal. And I'm like, no, there's a lot of people that would be complete weirdos and around somebody's wife and not give the wife the wiggle room that they should. And I like women. I like other people's wives. I just don't like their wives to that level, like way over and beyond. Uh, anyway, back, back to the notes here. Um, I will say something about having the wherewithal to want to work. He pulled a David Bowie. David Bowie, you know, put out music right before he passed away, and he was terminal. And Rush, you know, as much as his hearing was gone, he wasn't feeling well. He still found a way to get in there. And, of course, you know, people helped him out, but it still shows a little, like, a poise, I guess, to do what, if you like to do what you've been doing and, and you feel like a... a you know, a person who you're not laying down and it would take a lot to put certain people down. And I kind of admire that. Um, I will, I will say one thing. I, I know I was a little heavy handed with a handful of folks, but I can understand how folks got upset when he passed away. Um, he said some weird things in his life, but I think that I, I, I don't, I don't really believe in, uh, you know, like how people said, you know, pissing on somebody's grave. If I ever ran into his grave, I think I'd feel obligated to trim some grass off the side of it. I, I just feel like that um, he's earned his headstone. And, I mean, worse comes to worse, we get on with our lives. And I think Rush Limbaugh probably would want it that way. He'd also want you to light up a cigar and enjoy yourself. So, if you get a chance, go light up a cigar. All right. Hey, thank you for tuning in. Uh, feel free to feel, feel fry. Yeah. If you want to fry, feel free to not fry. Hit subscribe notifications uh, down over somewhere over there is a like button. Um, I already told you notifications. Ooh, Twitter, Gab, uh, do, do, do the uh, parlay. I almost called it Pander. Uh, I don't know what Pander is. It's kind of weird um hate email if you disagree with my comments about rush limbaugh if you're a libertarian feel free if you're a conservative feel free if you're a liberal feel free um uh, hell i might if you drop me a note or i might put it in a uh put it in a video and i also might stutter and uh, stumble all over my words so i will catch you the next time. Thank you for stopping by.